guys, welcome or welcome back to my little channel. It's a pretty exciting day. It's gonna be New Year's Eve tonight and this is gonna be my last video of this year. This is the third time that I'm filming this video because I'm an idiot the second time I actually forgot a palette and then I started editing this second video and I realized I'm not 100% happy with my ranking. So we're gonna do this video again. I'm gonna try to mosey on through it. I hate longer videos. I also hate editing them. So final big bang, guys, this is my mini palette video. I got two disclaimers for you. One, I am a small palette lover, meaning that all my palettes don't go over six shades. Like six shades is probably the max. I like smaller palettes because I don't have to think about it too much when I open a palette. I just want to use that palette. I'm not a makeup artist. So I kind of just want to open a palette, use that palette, enjoy the palette. And I'm very picky about smaller palettes that I use. I'm a mom. I work four times a week and I do have an office job. So my second disclaimer is these palettes are most likely not going to be the most colorful palettes that you'll ever see. I like wearable palettes. It's just my personal preference. So if you're someone that is waiting for some kind of peacock eye, I'm sorry, this is not the channel for you. It's always going to be basic bitch palette. So now that the disclaimers are out of the way, let's just get into the video. On last place, I actually have a palette of one of my favorite brands and it's Charlotte Tilbury. I don't have the palette with me because I purchased it and I actually immediately sent it back. To me, this palette did not look like the photos and that's the reason why I sent it back. It's the Celestial Palette of Pearls by Charlotte Tilbury, the Cosmic Pearl Palette, and I'll show it up here. And I already wasn't certain if I wanted to get it. It's an online exclusive, it's a limited edition, and it has that duochrome shade in it that's a little blue and a little pink. And honestly, that type of color story makes me look like I got punched in the face. It's the first palette of Charlotte Tilbury that I actually sent back. So it hurt my heart a little bit. The formulation is probably fine. By the way, if you hear some banging on the background, there are people that are, you know, lighting fireworks and all that. So we're just gonna mosey on through. We're gonna ignore it. I can't do anything about it. It is what it is, Silvi. From here on out, I do have all the palettes. That's the only palette that I actually decluttered right away and therefore it deserves my spot on the number 14th position. I know it's a little bit unfair because I know that the formulation is probably going to be really great. But you know, if you return something, it probably has to just be last place. It's just, you know, by default. Then on my number 13th position, I have a little palette by Makeup by Mario. I reviewed three of these palettes. So this was a holiday collection by Makeup by Mario. These are limited editions and three of them came out. I think the idea was to have one for light skin tones, medium skin tones, and one for deep skin tones. And this one would have been or is the deep skin tone quad. Let's first get the elephant out of the room. There is one shade missing. This pan is completely empty. And in that video, you actually see me open it up and the shade is just everywhere. It's this orange topper type of shade and it was already going to be my most unloved shade of this little quad but it didn't help this palette that one of the shapes was already broken the customer service by the way was great i got a refund right away they also asked me if i wanted the palette instead so you can replace it and i could just keep this one and the surface was so swift but this palette just wasn't for me not only was this shade broken i sort of like was okay with the fact that this shade was broken it was my least favorite shade i did try it out but then I went into the mattes and this brown, not only did it not complement my skin tone, I also felt it was the most difficult to work with and I really had to finesse it and finesse it. And like I said, I don't have a lot of time. I don't wanna have finicky products in my life. There's so, like, there's so many good quads out there. So the fact that this was not my favorite matte was already kind of like, ugh, the black is fine. This shade is also fine, this sort of topper shade, but it's just, you know, there's nothing too impressive about it. It is, it is what it is. So I am going to declutter this quad. I don't think I should keep it just because I like using the black as a smudgy liner. I think that there are many palettes out there that will trump this palette and therefore it is on my, you know, last position. The next palette that I want to talk about, I thought it was a little bit difficult to rank because... I love this brand, first of all, and you can use these shadows as individual iPods. It's the Westman Atelier iPod set in Rendezvous. 
This came out this year. It's not a holiday collection. It's part of their permanent line. And when I first saw it, I was already kind of like, okay, this is an interesting color story. There's a khaki green in it. It's called Bon Chance. And I thought I was going to like this shade a lot. And it's not a bad shade. I just don't really gravitate towards it. There's only one shade that I truly like in this set, and that's the shade Bizou. And I use this as a one and done shadow. So I find it hard to recommend this as a palette as a whole. I also find it interesting that Wisman Atelier is coming out with these singular iPods, so selling these individually. And there's currently two that are being sold individually. And I don't understand why they don't just make all of them individual. They already come in individual components. I don't understand what's the deal. Like the price is also the same if you buy them individually. So what's stopping them? It's so much more fun to be able to curate your own palette. I have all of these singular pods. So I have all sets. You can check out my video on all the individual sets that I have and all the in individual iPods. I have a very lengthy video on these and apply all of them on my eyes individually. And you can see that the Bizu color is ranked pretty high, but as I said, I would rank it lower than most of my palettes. Then on my 11th position, I have a palette that I found really difficult to rank for many reasons. So let's just get into it. This is the Olivio Palermo Au Naturel palette. It's a stunning palette. And if I was someone that just wanted one palette, but I liked smaller palettes and I was into that luxury palette feel, this would have been an amazing palette because it has mattes, it has two shimmers, and where one shimmer is just so bomb. You need to see this. It's such a beautiful color. This one is called Fawn, and you can wear this as a beautiful one and done shade. And I do wear this as a beautiful one and done shade. In terms of the color story, it's a really nice neutral color story. These two colors, I don't really gravitate towards. I actually just use the mattes and this one, so it could, could have easily been a quad, if you ask me. The packaging is probably one of the most beautiful packaging I've ever seen, but you can really just do some damage with this packaging. Honestly, you can be some of the death with it. It's the heaviest packaging I've ever had. It's a door stopper, honestly you can break someone's nose with this if you threw it at them. So packaging wise, it's really a winner. The mattes aren't my favorite mattes, but perform nicely. I do advise to always go in with this matte base color before you start using the other colors. It just gives such a smooth transition if you do that. So yeah, this palette kind of has it all, but for some reason, I like other palettes better. <laughs> And every time I look at this, I'm like, oh, I should use that more. And then I don't. I use other palettes. And I feel really sad that it has this position because I feel like it should be ranked higher. I, I like this palette. I like the quality of this palette. And yet it's still not my favorite. I don't know what I'll do with it yet. It's a little bit on the chopping block for me, but it's a stunning palette and deserves a little bit more love on the internet. Then on my number 10th position, it's the Makeup by Mario's 4-Play Quad in Nudes 2. So the last one you saw is Nudes 3. And this one is actually my most recommended quad in the video that I did on these. So hear me out, guys. This was my number one recommendation because these were all nudes, but they did come out for the holidays. So I felt that out of the three, this one gave the most holiday sparkle, holiday feel. It's a beautiful color story that complements my skin tone, but it's sort of kind of that, that one quad that sort of gets forgotten. And I don't have that many palettes, but this one really is just like, oh, you should use me more. So it's really talking to me going, you should use me more. And yet I don't. I have nothing bad to say about this quad. Part of me still wants to keep this because I feel like, yeah, I am gonna use it one day, but it is a limited edition quad. I have other color stories that I gravitate towards, but it's such good quality. So I'm still really on the fence with this one. Beautiful quad though, if you have it, you're not gonna you're not gonna be upset about this. I thought the formulation of this was also better than the Nudes 3 that I showed you as my like worst palette. So still on the fence what I will do with this if I'll declutter or, or I'll keep it. Maybe I'll project pan this one as well. No idea, but just not a standout. The next mini that I want to talk about is maybe a little bit of a you know, unfair ranking because it just came out and sometimes palettes can really surprise you. So you think you might not like something and then after a while you gravitate towards it over and over and over again. 
Therefore, I find that this might be an unfair ranking and maybe in the future I'll rank this differently. But for now, I'm gonna put it here. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Biba Palette. It just came out. I did a video on this comparing it to the Glam Light Face Palette or Glam Face Light Palette by Natasha Denona. And here's the thing. This gives a beautiful look. And when you see that video, you realize the light palette and this palette kind of they look exactly the same on me. With this color story, you can deepen out the eye a bit more because of the shade Bruno, which is the darkest shade in this palette. But it's also the shade that is the most annoying to work with. It doesn't like to layer over on top of each other and using it as a liner is actually the best way of using it in my opinion. So sadly, one shade kind of is just a dud. Then you have the last four. It's a beautiful color story. It looks beautiful on my eyes. I'll probably get some use out of this because this is the color story that I gravitate towards. It just doesn't get a higher ranking because I like that Glam Face Light Palette. I'm in love with that palette. So I'll gravitate towards that one before I'll do this one. On number eight, I have another Westman Atelier iPod set. This is the set in Le Nuit, so the night set. And this did not come out this year, but it's something that I tried this year. This was actually the color story that I expected not to like at all because it has like a dark red in it, which is called Vin Rouge. So this kind of wine red. And I did not think I was gonna look good in this color. Because I had the other two sets and I was very excited in using them together and just experimenting with them, I decided to get this last set. And I actually really love, 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 love this set. This set also comes out with a highlight shade called Champagne. This one is available as an individual and it's a great inner corner highlight. All of these are satin finishes and all of these come in this kind of like putty-like clay formulation. It's just a really interesting experience and I don't have anything like it. This is the most pigmented out of all the sets that she has. So if you are gonna go for a little bit more pigment, you can go for this set. It has this black in it that you can use as a liner. But I will say these are a wash of color. Don't think about it as a punch of color. On number seven, I have another Natasha Denona palette. This is the Mini Metropolis. I did not feature this on my channel because I never tried Natasha Denona before and I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this color story. But after I tried the Glam Light Face Palette, I immediately purchased this one. This was part of my Black Friday sale and I have been getting some really good use out of this. What I love about this palette is that you can do a daytime look if you take out this green shade. Then the shade that you have left is a beautiful look in itself. And this type of gold really complements my skin so much. And I have more golds like this in my collection, but this is the only one that I can truly say is so creamy, buttery. It's just a really great formulation. I think that getting to know Natasha Denona and the formulations that she has, I've been really enjoying it. Good mattes, good shimmers. I love the way it looks on the eyes. I'm just really happy to have this in my collection. There's nothing bad I can say about this except this shade probably won't be my most used shade ever, but I'm so happy that the shade is in my collection just so that I can compare other palettes to it. And also if I do one day wanna to gravitate towards an emerald green shade, I know that I have a great one in my collection that I can use for a you know, great nighttime look. So on my number six position is actually one that I did not think was gonna rank this high. I know it's still the middle, but this ranked way higher than I expected. And that's because I'm using it way more than I expected. This is the Makeup by Mario Four Play Quad in Nudes 1. And I ranked this in that video on second place, but this is one of those crazy eyeshadow palettes that I realized I love working with. So I reach for this way more than the other two. And it's just a perfect color story. It's effortless, it's mistake proof. It's really easy to work with, good mattes. It looks great on the eyes. I don't have to spend a lot of time when I use this quad. And I don't know, it's just, it's such a stunning palette. It's not a holiday palette, but if you are looking for something for everyday use, this, this is the one guys. This is the one you need to get. It's weird to me because the Nudes 2 definitely looks more defined. So I get way more definition out of it and I look more 
I guess, you know, regal, shiny, but I don't need to look regal and shiny on a daily basis. I like this color story. Definitely deserving of my number six position. I will not declutter this one. This one stays in my collection. So I debated putting the Nudes Foreplay Quad by Makeup by Mario on this position, but I switched these two around. So let's talk about it. This is the Pat McGrath Ritualistic Rose Quad, and this is that quad that has all the Astro Blitz shades. This is a new quad in my collection, and this is the quad that I'm kind of trying and testing out for the Blitz Astral shades and seeing what the hype is all about. And since I have this, I have been reaching for this a ton, more than the Nude Splay quad. I think that the Nude Splay quad I use just as a quad as a whole. I don't use anything else with it, that's it. But this quad, I seem to enjoy on its own, like as a standard quad, but I also love reaching for this for like a great topper shade. I'm currently using this as a topper shade on my inner lid, and it just amps up my look so much. I also love this color just all over the lid and putting the topper shade all over it. So this side of the palette gets a lot of use out of it. Sometimes when I wanna go into the more, I guess, rosy section, I go into this color. So it gives me a lot of versatility for such a, I guess, basic bitch quad. It really amps up most of my palettes and I've been reaching for this a ton. On my number four position, so we're already like in top five guys, but my number four position is another Pat McGrath quad. This is the Venus in Fleurs quad in Voyeuristic Vixen. This one doesn't have a Blitz Astral shade in it, but it has one of those crazy flaky dual chrome shades in it. And it sort of makes this quad a great quad for nighttime parties, but also for daytime. These three shades are just phenomenal. Those are the shades that I reach for the most. And this shade is currently in my inner corners right now. It's a beautiful quad. Admittedly, I won't use this shade too much because I am a little bit of a basic bitch. But these three shades I reach for a ton. I like this quad as on its own. And I like that you can take this along with you and still feel like you're covered on all the bases night and day. It's not my most used quad, so therefore it's on this position, but it's probably one of the quads that's just so dependable and makes for a really beautiful look. So here's my top three positions and this third position goes to a very basic quad and I love it. I honestly love this quad. I owe this brand an apology because it took me a while to get this to a love status. I sort of was very indifferent on this palette but since I got the Rowan Everything Eye Brush, oh, this palette has been on my vanity and top spot on my vanity because it's such a great everyday quad. I'm talking about the Victoria Beckham Beauty Eye Break and this is the, sorry, Smoky, Smoky Eye Break and this is in the shade Signature. This is an all matte quad and probably deserves the award for best basic bitch quad. <laughs> In my first ranking, I forgot this quad because it's on my vanity, so I kind of just like browsed over it, but it's on my vanity because I reach for it almost on a daily basis, or at least on a weekly basis, and that's just because this is great for the office. I am an office girl. I don't want to have a lot of fuss when I use my palettes, and this makes for a really great eye. The shades are very blendable. It is small. There is a little bit of fallout, but I... I always get a good look with this. Just because of how much I use it, it does deserve a number three spot in my list. So on my number two spot, I'm gonna admit my number one and my number two spots are very similar, but my number two spot goes to Charlotte Tilbury's Star Aura Quad. I think this came out either earlier this year or late last year, and this is part of their limited edition flawless filter line. I didn't pick this up at first because there's something very underwhelming about this quad, and the fact that you can get sort of this silky smooth eye look, it really opens up my eye. I've really been appreciating, I guess, lighter tones on my eyes instead of like really deepening out the eyes, but using these tones, I don't know. I feel my eyes are bigger, brighter, I feel more awake, I feel pretty when I wear this palette. I understand that like not everybody's going to be happy with this palette, but they're not too shimmery, so I can wear it for the office. 
It's just one of those palettes that I reach for a ton. And even though it doesn't contain any matte shades, I do feel that just because it's all, all satins or shimmery and they're not too overboard, I don't really need any of the mattes. I can just use this palette and this palette on its own. It's a great formulation. I actually like this formulation of Charlotte Tilbury. I know that some people were kind of complaining about it because you get less net weight, but I I am in love in love with this palette. I'm so happy to have it in my collection. I'm even considering getting a backup. That's how much I love it. Since I like the Star Aura Quad, you might already know which one this is gonna be, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Celestial Pearl Quad. This, just like the Star Aura Quad, is a beautiful light-toned quad, very understated. I did not think I was gonna like this at all when I first got it, and I was so impressed with this quad. These type of colors I've been really gravitating towards lately, and this is what I'm wearing today on my eyes. So I'm wearing this shade all over the lid, and then I'm gonna go in with that dual chromy shade. This gives a very beautiful reflex to the eye, but you can still use it for every day. But if you want to amp it up, I love using the dual chrome by Pat McGrath, so that shade over there, to just you know make this look, but then on steroids. So I do use this together, and I have used it together today. I think it makes such a beautiful eye look. As you can tell, there is a trend. And um, type of palettes that I do like and they're all this kind of like bright palette feel I like the brighter palettes I'm definitely basic and these are a little basic but these aren't too basic that you can't get a beautiful look out of it and even a holiday look so today's New Year's and I thought this quad is New Year's ready it's also great for every day it's just one of those multi-purpose quads it has to be on my number one I'm so so happy I have this because of this one I also started appreciating Star Aura more and there's nothing else that I could say about this it's great formulation great color story great quad if you can still get it because it is limited edition get it it has that limited edition packaging and it's probably my most beautiful Charlotte Tilbury quad that I own 100% recommend. Guys, this is it. This is my ranking of 14 mini palettes that I did this year. Thank you so much. Have a great New Year. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Charlotte Tilbury, Victoria Beckham Beauty, Westman Atelier, Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona. These are some of the brands that I'm going to be featuring for 2022. I love doing YouTube. I started YouTube this year, so I am a very small channel. So do subscribe to my channel or like some of the videos that I have. If not this one, maybe another one. I appreciate all my subscribers. And if you have any questions, please always comment down below. I have time for you. I'll make sure to answer all your questions as much as possible. I like doing long replies, so some of you might have already seen that. And I'll definitely make sure to have that interaction going. I like connecting with you. I don't have a huge community around me that loves makeup as much as I do. So please, please, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, comment down below, and have a great, great New Year's. Bye, guys.